Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Wild Tales, A Pirate Legacy. Now, Wild Tales is a cooperative legacy game in which you will build your own empire by successfully navigating each chapter of the campaign. Your choices will permanently alter the story and the game's components. After the campaign ends, you'll be able to continue playing your customized game with random scenarios. Now, before I teach you how to play Wild Tales, I do want to mention our sponsor, StoneValleyGames.com. StoneValleyGames.com is your friendly, distant game store run by Eric and Wendy. Eric spent 25 plus years in the U.S. Army and became a lover of gaming while he was in there. He uh, spent a lot of time solo gaming as well as, of course, gaming with friends. And then he now runs this store with his wife, Wendy. They have all kinds of great stuff going on over there. If you live in the continental United States and you uh, purchase $100 or more from StoneValleyGames.com, they will ship to you for free. If you're in the military right now and you're overseas with an AA, AE, or AP address, they will ship to you for free. And if you're a returning customer, they have a loyalty program as well. Tons of great stuff over there. Old classics, new hotness, old hotness, new classics, everything in between, go check them out, stonevalleygames.com. There is a link in the description below. As you're playing through this legacy campaign, it's important to always disregard any card that has this lock symbol on it until you're told to unlock that card. The same goes for any rules or other components that have that lock symbol. Players will also need to access the campaign book the rules has a QR code that you can use to access the campaign book. Or you can simply search for Wild Tales campaign book and find it that way through Google. Once you're in the campaign book, there's a short set of additional rules you'll need to read and then continue on into the campaign where one of the first things that will happen before you play anything at all is it will tell you to unlock these two characters. When you unlock a character, you mark out the lock symbol like this. Anna and Samuel are the first two character cards you unlock. Characters can hold resources, use skills and abilities, and indicate objective progress. Immediately after unlocking Anna and Samuel, you're told to unlock this stronghold, which will be your first empire card. The empire stores resources and provides abilities that both players can activate. The pirate's log is a round indicator and quick reference. The campaign log on the back is updated throughout the campaign. Scenario cards are flipped and rotated to represent scenes, objectives, threats, and along the side you can see different resources as well. To set up the game, you first should read the campaign book until you reach a new scenario. Then set up each scenario as follows. Find the cards corresponding to the scenario's objectives and threat. These are the two objectives for the first scenario and the threat for the first scenario. Place these cards within easy view of both players. Take all the remaining scenario cards with the scene side up and shuffle them. And then form a deck with enough room for a discard pile. The top card shows the active scene, in this case, break into the armory. Both the deck and the discard pile should be seen side up throughout the game. Next, find the scenario's capture value, which will be in the campaign book, and capture that number of scenes from the top of the deck. We'll discuss capturing cards in more detail shortly. For scenario one, the capture value is zero, so you won't have to worry about that during the first scenario. Place the pirate's log just below the threat, and make sure that the round indicator here lines up with round one. Each player chooses a different unlocked character and places that character in front of themselves and place the empire card with the stronghold icon side up in between the two characters. Finally, players can choose which player goes first. Each scenario can last up to seven rounds. In each round, players take turns as the active player and both players may activate abilities at any time. Players may use the pirate's log for reference, and you'll see that your turn proceeds through the following steps. Check for crisis, take one action, 
store resources optionally, and check for the end of the round. The first step is the crisis check. At the beginning of your turn, you check for a crisis. First, find the curse icon on the active scene. If that icon is present on the pirate's log, as you can see here, and it lines up with a crisis effect icon on the threat card, which it does there, then that crisis effect is triggered. In this case, players will need to capture the top card from the discard pile. Again, we'll talk about capturing cards more momentarily. If the curse icon isn't present or it doesn't line up with a crisis effect currently, or the crisis effect cannot be resolved, then nothing happens. All crisis effects can be found explained in detail on page 15 of the rules. After resolving any crisis effect, players then take one action. These actions will allow the player to gain resources, make progress in the scenario, or change the active scene. The available actions are complete a scene event, gain a level on an objective, attack the threat, or discard the active scene. Let's talk about each of those in a little bit more detail. First, let's talk about completing scenes. Each scene has four events on it. If you complete any one of the events on the active scene, you gain the resources shown next to it, to the right. There are three types of events. Gain resources for free, as you can see with this top one. Pay a resource to gain resources, as you can see with these red icons and succeed in a skill check for resources, as you can see with the blue icon. If you complete an event, you use its Roman numeral one, two, three, or four to locate the corresponding reward on one of the card edges. So if you completed this first one, Recruit Mercenaries, you would find it here, side one, with those two swords. On the other hand, if you had completed number four, Protect the Loot, you'd flip it over and go to side four. There. The player who completed that scenario would then tuck card underneath their character so that the resources that they obtained are showing at the top. Your character now holds those resources. The second possible action is to gain one objective level. Each objective has four levels across the top. After both objectives have been completed, the players can then attempt to eliminate the threat and win the scenario. To gain a level, the player must pay its level up cost. When you gain the first level, align the level indicator with level one on your character. On subsequent levels, shift it over one space. Once your character has chosen an objective, they may only level up their objective. Objectives grant rewards with each level gained, such as a plus one bonus to an indicated skill, a plus two bonus to an indicated skill, a permanent resource, and half the requirement to eliminate the threat. The third action a player can take is to attack the threat. The threat is your adversary and must be eliminated to win the scenario. When the threat captures cards, Take that number of scenes from the specified location and tuck them under the threat so that all of the captured card's curse icons can be seen. When you attack the threat, you will perform a skill check to see if you defeat them. The target value is the sum of the threat's base skill level plus the number of captured cards. So in this case, it would be 5, but in this case, it would be 7. After attacking the threat, always discard the active scene regardless of the outcome. If you defeat the threat, you set them back temporarily. Discard all captured cards. And if both objectives are complete when you defeat the threat, you have eliminated them and you win the scenario. The fourth possible action, which really does not need much explanation, is to simply discard the active scene. After the players have taken their one action, the next step in the round is optional and they may store any resources they have in the Empire. The Empire may hold up to three resources. The Empire may hold up to a maximum of three cards. The final step of the turn is to check for the end of the round. If the deck is empty, meaning this is the discard pile, then end the round. If the round ends and it's the seventh round, then the game is over and the players lose. Also, if the round ends and there's no discard pile, the players also lose. However, as long as it's not the seventh round, and as long as the discard pile isn't empty, 
then players will start a new round. First, players shuffle the discard pile to create a new deck. Players capture one card from the top of the deck. Shift the pirate's log to the right so that it moves up one round. And if the empire's card is on this side, then flip it to this side. Remember that the way you end the scenario is by eliminating the threat, meaning both objectives have been completed and then you defeat the threat. But there are three ways for the players to lose. If there are five cards captured by the threat, if any round ends with an empty discard pile or the seventh round ends. Characters use their skills, bravery, deception, and savvy to perform skill checks for particularly challenging tasks. Each skill check specifies a target value for a certain skill. In the case of this threat, the target value begins at five deception. To begin the skill check, slide the active scene off the deck and place it next to the revealed scene, which is now the top card of the deck. You will compare these two scenes. You will compare the active scene to the revealed card to resolve this skill check. If the active scene had been the only card in the deck, you would shuffle the discard pile and then use the top card as the revealed card. However, if there were zero cards or one card in the discard pile, then you would not be able to take actions that require skill checks. The first thing the player will need to do is compare the curse icons. If they match, then the player automatically fails a skill check. In this case, they don't, so we're good. Since these icons do not match, the player will add the skill modifier of the revealed card to the character's skill value. Here's the skill modifier and the player's deception value. If the final total is greater than or equal to the target value, then you succeed at the skill check. And then resolve the success for that skill check as appropriate. If the player had failed at the skill check, they would discard the active scene. A player may normally activate any abilities shown on their character or empire at any time on any turn, but many abilities do have restrictions. Some abilities will have this icon next to them, which means they may only be used if the empire is on this side. Some abilities may indicate they have a maximum number of times they can be used per turn. And some abilities may indicate they may only be used during some rounds. And this symbol indicates it may only be used for the character activating that ability. As long as you aren't restricted from using the ability, then pay its cost, shown here, and then resolve it. There are three ability keywords, smuggle, buff, and conspire, and they're described in detail on page 10 of the rules. Finally, let's discuss resources in a little more detail. Characters can hold any number of resource cards, while the Empire can store a maximum of three cards. Resources can be spent, stored, and smuggled. Different resources each have their own icons. The basic resources are barrel, sword, and coin. There is also a cannon resource and the gem resource. A gem may be spent to pay for any one basic resource or a gem, but not to pay for a cannon. If a gem is ever shown in the cost of something, then only a gem may be used to pay for it. This icon indicates that any type of resource can be used to pay for it. Some objectives grant a permanent resource, which is marked with this star. It may only be spent once a turn and only during your turn, but they are not discarded when spent. Abilities, events, and objectives often have costs, and these must be paid using only your character's resources. If the character only spends some of the resources on a card, so maybe they only spent one coin. Set it aside. The player may spend its remaining resources until the end of the turn. If all of the card's resources are spent, then discard it. Also, at the end of each turn, discard all cards that were set aside by either player, whether or not the resources have been spent. In that case, the unspent resources are lost. And that's how you play Wild Tales of Pirate Legacy. Be sure to check back for other great videos, uh, great instructional videos, great gameplay videos. Upcoming, we've got how to play Aeon Trespass Odyssey. We've got 
how to play Australia, how to play Perdition's Mouth, how to play Keystone North America. Lots of great stuff coming up. So check back for all that. And until next time, for Board Online, Board Offline.